Here we are, Wednesday night, midweek moment. Thanks for jumping online with me tonight. Let me just ask you a question. How's your week going? Are you having a good week? Have some things happen in your week that maybe flip things upside down? Well, let's get back on track tonight, okay? Let's get it turned around. Every day with Jesus is better than the day before. Thank God for another day, all right? Okay, tonight we're looking uh, back into Philippians chapter 3. Last week we looked at verses 12 through 16 and uh, what the Apostle Paul was saying about our relationship with the Lord. Uh, I mentioned last week that when Paul writes, uh, sometimes he uses word pictures to describe our uh, relationship with the Lord, to describe what Christianity looks like. He used architecture, Uh, he talked about the church being like the human body where every member of the body uh, contributes to the health of the body. That's how the church works. Everybody's important. Everybody has a part to play. Uh, Paul also used farming, talking about sowing seed and reaping a harvest back in our life. And he liked to talk about athletics. He often used that word picture. And that's what he's doing in Philippians chapter 3. He's talking about the Christian life and comparing it to an Olympic race. Runners running a race is what he pictures as us running our spiritual race or fulfilling the will of God in our life. Now last week we looked at two keys that Paul gave us in chapter 3. And the keys for running a successful race was run with a sense of discontentment. In other words, we can't just be satisfied on past wins. We have to keep moving forward, all right? So it's kind of a a sanctified discontentment, if you will. And then he talked about running with a single-mindedness, that we have to be focused. Remember, Paul said, one thing I do. We need to prioritize our relationship with the Lord. It needs to be the main priority and the main focus of our life. Tonight, we're going to look at two other keys that Paul gives us to running our race. The third one is run in the right direction. (laughs) Run in the right direction. Uh, Duh, that seems like a no-brainer, right? Who's going to run a race backwards? Notice what he said in Philippians 3.13. Forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. Forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead. Now, Paul... Uh, had a picture in his mind of the Grecian games that took place back in the day, okay? The Grecian games. I watched track and field on television. Uh, I participated when I was a young person in track. And I can tell you this, uh, I've never seen a person run backwards and win a race. Never seen a person run backwards and win a race or win an award or win a medal. You know that a track, they run clockwise. Picture this in your mind, eight runners lining up for the 100-meter dash. The gun goes off, seven of them run the right way, one of them, the eighth one, runs the wrong way. Do you think he's going to win anything? No. Do you think he's going to get disqualified? Yes. Do you think he's going to look like a fool? Absolutely. So Paul is telling us if we're going to run our race and be successful and be rewarded at the end of the race, we have to run in the right direction. In fact, Jesus said the very same thing. In Luke 9, 62, Jesus said anyone who puts a hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. What was Jesus saying? The same thing Paul was saying. We have to be forward thinking. We have to look forward, forgetting what lies in the past. Now, forgetting doesn't mean amnesia. It'd be great if God could erase my memory of every silly thing and foolish thing I've done in the past. He doesn't do that. Forgetting simply means I choose, you choose, we choose not to be controlled by the past. That we realize that every day is a new day and every day we must run today's race. Forgetting means that I'm not going to be paralyzed by past mistakes. I'm not going to be satisfied by yesterday's successes. We all have mistakes in the past. We all have success in the past. All of us can look back and see things we've done foolishly. I think back sometimes over my life and there's things that I've done, I'm embarrassed that I did them. They were, they were poor choices and got me in really difficult situations. But I can't allow myself to live there. 
I can't allow past mistakes to keep me from, from running forward, keep me from pursuing the goal, the plan, the destiny that God has for my life. In the same way with success. Sometimes we become complacent. We look back and say, well, I did a really good job there. Well, thank God we did a good job there, but we can do a better job here. Okay? It's all about moving forward, moving in the right direction. So let me ask you a question tonight. Are you forgetting the past? Are you letting go of the past? In fact, maybe you could just hit something in the chat box tonight and say, hey, I'm letting go of the past. I, I'm, I'm moving forward. I'm looking forward. I'm, I'm, I'm pursuing and running in the right direction. Let us know what's happening, okay? Let us know what's happening. Learn from past success. Learn from past failure. But keep moving forward and running in the right direction. And then the fourth key he gives us is run with maximum effort. Look at verse number 14. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I press on toward the goal. The word press on or the phrase press on simply means to have uh, an intense endeavor, intense pursuit. In fact, Greeks would all, often use that same word press in the Greek language to describe a hunter that was hunting prey, tracking down prey. If a hunter went out to track down an animal, he was intense about it. He was focused on it. He was, he was giving his best effort because he realized that if he could kill the animal, he could bring that food home and feed his family. It was a way of sustaining his life and the life of his family. And Paul said, when you run your race, when you walk out your salvation, when you follow the plan that God has for your life, you have to run in the right direction and you have to give maximum effort. Again, Paul picturing here the Olympics or the Grecian Games. Uh, I, I think back to an athlete that I always admired. Her name was Gail Devers. Uh, Gail Devers was an Olympic athlete, uh, one of the fastest women in the world. And in 1990, she was diagnosed with a disease and it was attacking her autoimmune system. They began to give her radiation and some other things, and, and then it began to affect her feet, and they got, it got so serious that they thought they might have to amputate one of her feet. Now, that's terrible for anyone, but it's the end of the line for an athlete. And yet, she overcame that, and in 1992, she was in the Olympic Games in Barcelona, Spain. Now, she had won gold medals in the past in the 100 meters, and this time she's running the 100 meter, hurdle, 100 meter hurdles. The race begins, they take off, and Gail is winning the race. She gets to the last hurdle, and she trips on the last hurdle, falls on her face. Now she's crawling, literally crawling to the finish line. Well, obviously, she didn't win the race, she didn't win a medal. But what she did is she gave maximum effort. Even though she tripped, even though she stumbled, even though it was a difficult and painful situation, she refused to give up. She gave maximum effort. So let me ask you a question. In your race, in your Christian life, in your walk with the Lord, are you giving maximum effort? Are you giving Jesus your very, very best? Because if we don't give our best, then we're not going to get His best. If we don't give our best, then we're not going to win any races. We're not going to move from point A to point B. We're not going to see much success or fruitfulness in our life. Are you really focused on Him? Are you focused on what He wants you to do and the effort He wants you to put forth? In fact, even in the chat line tonight, you can just chat, hey, on a scale of on a scale of 1 to 10, where do you think your effort is? Are you a 1? Are you a 10? Are you a 7? Is there room for improvement? I'd like to hear because I think there's room for improvement in all of our lives. So remember this. In, in, in our Christian life, in this race as Paul describes it, we are running for reward. When we get to heaven, we're going to be rewarded. 
yes, God's going to bless us here on this earth, but when we get to heaven, we're going to get the big reward. We're going to get the medal, if you will. And I don't know about you, but I want a gold medal. You know, I don't want a bronze medal. I want a gold medal. Never forget we're running for a reward. Now, some people say, well, you know, it's not about getting rewards. Well, the Bible teaches that we're getting rewards. In fact, Paul uh, wrote to the Corinthians, and he talks about rewards. In chapter 9, 1 Corinthians, verse number 24, Paul said, Don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. So run to win. There's the challenge. Run to win. Maximum effort. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away. But we do it for an eternal prize. So Paul said, I run with a purpose in every step. I'm not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. What a picture. Again, he's giving us a word picture of athletics and saying the Christian life is like athletics. We're in a competition. We're running a race. God has a race for all of us to run. I can't run your race. You can't run my race. We must run our own race. And we must run in the right direction. We must be focused when we run. And we must give maximum effort. And when we do, He will reward us. You know, an Olympic athlete they compete and they run for a medal. In the NBA, the National Basketball Association, they give maximum effort because they want to win a championship and get a championship ring. In NFL football, this year the Tampa Bay Buccaneers won the Super Bowl. They're going to get a championship ring, declared world champions. Well, we're not going to get a ring that can rust. We're not getting rewards, Paul said, that are going to fade away. We're going to get an eternal reward. And he talks about it in throughout Scripture. We'll get a reward for our faithfulness. When you're faithful to the Lord and you run your race in faithfulness, He will reward us. We're going to get a reward for our righteousness, how we live our life. We're going to get a reward for winning people to Jesus Christ. We're going to get a reward for self-discipline, how we manage our life. So listen to me, my friend. Be motivated. Be inspired. We need to get up every day and say, this is an opportunity for me to live for the Lord. This is an opportunity for me to run my race. God has a plan. I'm not going to live in the past. I'm going to keep running to the future. I'm going to keep giving maximum effort, and I'm going to continue to see God bless me, and ultimately I will stand at that finish line and be rewarded for what I've done for the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to get after it. I'm ready to get after it right now and give my best for Jesus. I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Remember, keep running your race.